My dear brothers and sisters, mga hinigugma, diha ni Kristo. The Gospel for today, the third Sunday of Lent, is about the cleansing of the temple by Jesus. It is taken from the second chapter of John, and in the synoptic, the Gospel is written by Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the cleansing of the temple could be read in the last part, particularly before the passion of Jesus. John in today's gospel narrates that the cleansing of the temple took place before the feast of the Passover. In the Jewish custom, all Jewish males in Israel were obliged to attend these three main Jewish feasts, Passover, the Feast of the Tabernacle, and Pentecost. We could just imagine the city of Jerusalem crowded with men coming from all over Israel. This could be likened to the fiesta celebration in Bohol in the month of May when we know Bolanos from all over the country, from even some parts of the world, would go home to Bohol in order to celebrate the joyful feast with their families and relatives. We know that as a young boy, Jesus used to enter the temple together with Joseph. And now he is entering the temple as a grown-up man. And this particular incident happened after he performed his first miracle that was the changing of the water into wine at the wedding in Cana. Now he is entering the temple not as an ordinary pilgrim like the rest. He is entering the temple as the Son of God revealing his identity and mission and his zeal for the house of God. Many brothers and sisters, the temple as we know is a place of worship, a holy place. And as he enters the temple, Jesus claimed that it is his father's house. The temple actually is the pride of every Israelite. And one who visits the Holy Land would recall that originally it covers almost one third of the city, the temple, the, the gates, and, and of course, uh, surrounding the temple. The temple is supposed to be revered because in the Israelite concept, in order to be holy, you have to be in the Holy Land. You have to go to the Holy City, Jerusalem. But more importantly, you have to go to the temple, the center of holiness. And therefore, it's supposed to be revered, to be kept clean, to be maintained as a sacred place because truly so, it is the place where the people encounter God. When they encounter the Father, the Lord of heaven and earth, when they encountered the God who saved them from slavery in Egypt, the God who journeyed with them and their ancestors, rather, from Exodus until they reached the promised land. Everyone who goes to the temple would recall that there they encountered the God's faithfulness accompany them all throughout their history as a chosen people of God. Many brothers and sisters, the cleansing of the temple by Jesus reminds us today and how we also revere and take care of our places of worship, our churches, our chapels, our cathedrals, our basilicas. We are happy to note and we are most grateful that Particularly here in Cebu, we are doing our best to beautify our churches, 
to preserve and restore the old churches, which are now part of our cultural heritage. As we recall with gratitude, the commendable efforts of those who labored to build these beautiful edifices and places of worship that we now benefit from. And of course, to build new ones so we could accommodate more churchgoers even in the remotest part of the archdiocese. My dear brothers and sisters, during the lockdown last year, when all the churches were closed and the priests celebrated masses without the people, when everybody relied on online masses to prevent the further spread of the virus, we saw images, pictures of people fervently praying outside the gates of our cathedrals and churches, and we felt the hunger and the desire of our brothers and sisters to enter the church, even just to sit in silence and pour out their hearts to God and encounter His mercy and love. Such is the significance of our places of worship, of these sacred places, and it is also along this line that we joyfully receive the documents from Rome, granting our request for plenary indulgences and the opening of the holy door of our cathedral and other designated churches in our archdiocese, so that more faithful will benefit from the graces of Holy Mother Church in this jubilee year, 500 years of Christianity. Lastly, my dear brothers and sisters, the cleansing of the temple likewise reminds us that our bodies, our hearts, are temples of the Holy Spirit and therefore must be kept clean and revered. In the emphasis that we give on Binunyaga Nako, we own this wonderful truth that indeed in baptism the Spirit dwells in us. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, this Lenten season, let us allow Jesus to cleanse our hearts, to purify us, to renew our lives, and benefit from the graces of this season of repentance. We know that renewal is not an overnight effort. It is a lifetime process and it is a non-stop decision to follow the ways of the Lord every day. To say yes to Him, to follow His ways. What a beautiful way to prepare for the renewal of our baptismal promises as we thank God profusely in commemorating the first baptism that took place 500 years ago in our land, in Cebu, and celebrate the gift of Christianity. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask for this grace, a heart renewed, a heart ever grateful that we, the Church, our bodies too are consecrated and for that we know we are gifted to give. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>